Welcome guys, my name is Art and today I have a friend with me, his name is Spencer. Hi everybody. Uh, Spencer is a content creator and he is a student in New York City, he's gonna introduce himself, but it's funny, we met with him very accidentally on the streets of New York City when I was with Chris and interviewing other people and we interviewed Spencer. I'm gonna leave his link to his Instagram and TikTok, definitely check him out. And I have an interview with him today. I wanna ask Spencer about his story in New York and his story, coming out story. So if you can just start with introducing yourself. Sure. Uh, who are you, when did you move to New York and what do you do here? Hi everyone, I'm Spencer. I am 19, I turned 20 in two weeks, so. Congrats. <laughs> I, I, feel, I feel old. You feel old. Um, I'm a sophomore at NYU and I am studying journalism and English, but I want to do neither of them. So well, why I, did you go to journalism if you don't? Ideally, it would have been creative writing, but that's not a major offered, so now I'm in journalism. So do you feel like you need to go to for journalism in order to become a journalist? I feel like it's like really interesting to learn about journalism because it's a whole entire different style of writing. Mm -hmm. So I'm really enjoying what I'm learning. I'm a creative writer, so English has been more fun for that. I'd so say. what do you study in English? Like what exactly? Like is it literature? It's literature mostly, yeah. So you read a lot? Yeah. That's a good sign. <laughs> a very love-hate relationship with I, that. I've, uh, I've finished international relations, which never really... I mean, we learned marketing there. It did help yeah. me a little bit, so you're not the only one. Spencer is gay. <laughs> I'm outing him. <laughs> Spencer. Guys, I'm coming out. I'm gay. <laughs> Where are you from originally? Okay, so I grew up in Connecticut, so not very far from New York City, in a very small town, very much middle of nowhere. How many people in the town? Like, okay, this is, then I'm gonna say the number and you're gonna make fun of me. No, I like, am. I'm, I'm gonna say like, I think it's like 7,000 people. That's, it's not bad. That's I, like I've had 28,000, yeah. Yeah, that's, I feel like 7,000 small. Like, you know everyone and everyone knows everyone and there was, no, there was nothing. All it was was trees and houses and. How long did it took you to get to high school from your time? You couldn't walk anywhere, so it would be like a 10 minute drive. Mm -hmm. So did you drove by yourself like from 14? Oh, I'm a twin. So um, my twin sister and I, we would drive each other to school. So you have a twin sister? I have a twin sister, yes. Do you guys look alike? But me and her do not look, sometimes. If okay. I feel like some people say yes, other people say no. When you were growing up in such a, like, was it like conservative town or was it like, because it's Connecticut, it's not yeah. so far. It's kind of, con it's, it's complicated because it, I would say it's relatively like progressive. But I also went to Catholic school for a couple of years. There's a majority of the people that are progress are there are progressive, but then it's like the few that are not are very loud, loud about not. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. you know. Can you share with us? I obviously talked to Spencer about it before, if he's agreed to it. But can you share with us what was your coming out process? Ooh, this is a fun story. Like, um, what was behind ooh, okay? That? I didn't understand for my entire life that I was gay fully until I was 16. I had this took weird, <laughs> it took me a while, but I knew I was gay, but I also didn't. So I don't know if you relate, but I, I had this, probably, yeah. I had this wild dream that when I kissed a girl, it'd be like, go, go an awakening. And I'd realize that I was straight the entire time. And all these confused thoughts that I had would not like be real anymore. And then I kissed a girl and I was like, shit. I was like, this isn't going to work. Um, this is, <laughs> so this you guys are in real life then? That was when I was 16 at summer camp. I was like, this isn't going to work. Um, so what did you feel like? I felt nothing. <laughs> um, and I was like, <laughs> I was like, shit. Then I was like, guys, question mark, you know. But uh, may I interrupt you real quick? <laughs> yeah, go for it. 16 years. Yeah. And you did not felt like there was like a sexual attraction to the guy? Because oh, like, I feel like- I Oh, like... I mean, I'm a liar. Of course I did. Okay, but you I did, just, like, yeah. I don't know if you guys relate. It's called shoving your feelings down really deep. Um, and I did that for a very long time. So I knew, obviously, but I also like convinced myself that I was like, you know, not gay, but I was, it was a very complicated thing. So when I was, when I was 16 and I had this realization, it was really weird because all of these like memories and stuff of me liking guys and a lot of stuff that I kind of like forgot about kind of came back to me and it was really weird. What did like, you feel? Like, do you feel like I got a kiss guy or like? It felt overwhelming because it was kind of like accepting something that I always knew. It felt right, but it also felt really overwhelming to accept something that I've always known, but and you know, I, So I'm not religious. I've never, you know, yeah. I went to church maybe five times over my lifetime. Before I moved to America, I didn't know that yeah. the Christmas holiday is about God being born. I thought it's just a Christmas oh, really? holiday. Yeah, and I moved to America when I was 20. 
Uh, I just said it's Christmas, you know, like yeah. New Year's Eve. So may I ask you, because you say Roman Catholic school, right? That's what I went to a Catholic school, guys. Yes. Um, is it high school? Or? It was my, so I've had a really weird school experience. I went from my junior, senior year of high school. So after I realized I was gay, that's when I transferred into the Catholic school. So uh, yeah. what is the difference between Catholic school and regular school? There's really not much of a difference. I mean, my public school versus my Catholic school, it was like glorified public school. Um, the main difference was religious classes, taking class on religion, and then like mass and doing a prayer in the morning and at the end of the day. I would say the bulk of the kids there are like very religious. Like, um, uh, did you like learn in uh, your class that you cannot be gay or something like this? Uh, Is it yeah. something they teach you when you're 17 or like 15? Yeah, so I was, since I didn't go till I was 16 to this Catholic school, I was only getting to a place of understanding myself. And then I was at this Catholic school and then I got outed. And I was like, well, with my fucking luck, great. <laughs> um, I was like, awesome, what's next? What could be next? And then after being outed, I go to religious class or whatever, and then I'm told that I'm a sin. So I was like, you know what? Can we come back to this, this part? Is How did it happen? Great. How did I get outed? How did you get outed? By who? Oh, God, I was 16, and I was talking to this kid on Snapchat, and I was feeling ballsy because he was flirting with me. He was flirting with me and I was feeling ballsy, so I was like... He was flirting hang. with you. Yeah, I was like, we should... That's I what like, I had to. I was like, we should hang out. And he was like, yes. And then I walk into school like that, <clears> that couple days later, because this was over the weekend. He, cause he, he, and then he made some weird comment about how like, we shouldn't tell anyone that we're hanging out. None of us said anything explicit, but it was very like, you know, subjective. I go to school that Monday and I'm in the cafeteria and people are coming up to me and they're like, are you gay? And I'm like, what? because only my closest friends knew at the time and he pretty much told his entire friend group that this is kind of kind of explicit but he was pretty much told his entire friend group that like I was asking him for nudes and I was I you went know, a similar experience yeah. and it made me feel like really like you know shitty shitty because it's none of it was true and then he also said that like I was making all these like, sexual comments to him but the it, but his story made no sense because like the logic of it was kind of like everyone kind of questioned the story because the story was changing every five minutes so everyone was kind of confused mm -hmm. um and no one really cared but it felt like my world completely crumbled around me i felt you know like the entire like image that i created especially since i was the new kid Sh did uh, yeah it wasn't it wasn't what do you fun mean by like he changed his story every five minutes like one point it was me asking for nudes and then the next minute it was me sending him nudes and then people were like which one is which um and i did none of it i I'm, I don't send nudes, so I w it was just, like, confusing. And also, what? I was 16, you know? I was so new to understanding my sexuality and myself. All I felt in that moment was I felt like... I feel like a lot of us can feel this way. Yeah. But feel kind of like... Like, a villain. Like, you're kind of, like, a gross person. Like, you're disgusting. Like, and you, you can't help but feel gross in those situations because people are making you out to be this person that is gross. I wanted to ask you. I agree. I wanted. Let me to ask you. What is what is what is your? You said you have a similar uh, story. Uh, my similar story. Though, I was also talking to a guy. Okay. And I was also getting way too risky, and there was a girl who liked this guy. So uh, she went through his phone, and she exposed me at some point. So, oh Jesus! So and that's, this, that's that. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. It's all, uh, relatable. Relatable, yeah. <laughs> relatable <laughs> content. Rel relatable for sure. Yeah. And it was not nice. I did not like this girl after. But I was a little bit lucky because we did not live in the same town anymore. Okay. So I was like just trying to escape this. You know, like I. Yeah. You know, but it was awkward. She ended up dating this guy. But this guy was, you know, he's very confused. I don't know what, what was happening. But exactly the same situation is like, you feel like they're flirting or something. And we did not really send nudes. And also, we also kissed even. You know what I mean? So it was, uh, it was, oh, it was weird. We never kissed. Yeah, and it's, it we, was hard for him. But he probably wanted to protect his straight identity. You said that he changed the story every five minutes. Did he even like said, why did he do this? I mean, the reality of the story is he was definitely confused himself, and it was, it was, it was, it's sad. I feel bad for him because this kid would t ask my twin about me all the time, 
back in junior year of high school. Because that's my point. I feel like he is probably gay in closet. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. You know I mean? I, I'm, I'm, con I'm convinced that he's like somewhat on the spectrum of like not being straight. Yeah. I don't know if he's gay, I don't know if he's bi, I don't know how he chooses to label himself. It took me a long time to get over the anger I had over being outed. And he even apologized eventually. Right, right but then, did. yeah, well, because my sister like called him out on his bullshit, because like he kept asking about me, and then she like yelled at him about it, and then he called me up and apologized. But then, like six months later, he told me to go to hell. So, What's your advice: how to deal when you're in the situation like this? Because there is going to be a lot of kids or like people who are yeah. being outed. How did you dealt with yourself over embarrassing, gross, you know, like all this thing you had? I mean, being outed was a very complicated experience because I was angry, but I was sad, but. It took me a long time to get, oh, it took me about a year to get, you know, to a place of um, balance with all of it. So Even he, now, he really fucked you up I'm, a bit. I'm, I'm gonna be 20, you know, in two weeks. And trust and being open has been something that I've struggled with my entire life. And being out, it definitely did not help that. That is for sure. But uh, and it's did, just did like, you have any specific thing that you did that it helped you to get through this? TikTok like, helped. I mean, to be honest with you guys, it's like when I was 17, I started posting about whatever I was going through. I think it's important to find people with common ground or common experiences. I mean, even for us, for example, like us relating, I feel that helps every time I meet someone who can relate or can have an experience that I can see myself in. You're not alone. It's, it's like the idea yeah. of not being alone, which is so cheesy and cliche and just... But it's true. It's like, find people that you can connect with. And in high school, it's really hard. If you're gay, bi, whatever, finding people that are also identifying similarly or also in the same boat as you can be tricky because a lot of people don't come out in high school. Did you have um, people who were gay openly in high school? No. Same. I did God, not. God, no. You know I mean? Which didn't help, but you find one or two friends that really care about you, and even if they don't have an experience like your own, if they're there for you, that's all that matters. And if you have no one in school, I always say that it gets better after high school, or it will get better. Because, genuinely speaking, before I went to this Catholic school, at the other school I was at, I had zero friends, you know? So you're, you're a I was I was sitting in the outside the cafeteria like by the library alone against the wall eating lunch every day. I can relate to this too. <laughs> I had zero friends. And then I go to the Catholic school and even with all the religious crazy bullshit and with being outed, I still managed to find one or two friends. And now I'm a sophomore in college at NYU. So it it all wor it all works out, honestly. I uh, I wanted to say it does. that um, it's so funny cuz a lot of people when they do social media People think that they're very outgoing and fun. I always yeah. say, people who do social media or people who do YouTube or TikTok, majority of the time, they don't have a lot of friends. They're really they, close, they, they, you know what I mean? They're just trying to like put themselves actually to find friends. Because whenever I do like live stream on YouTube, I have like the same amount of people who come every week and it's been over a year now. And I know they care and it's like, this is a therapy for me. You know what I mean? So yeah. good advice, TikTok how can help you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, 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 it's good. I mean, you just made a really good point. I want to mm. talk about that. It's like the idea of um, finding people with common ground. Social media was a great outlet for me. I met a lot of kids back when I was 17 that were also gay and struggling. And like, I have, I have friends from 17 that I still have now because of social media and whatnot. But sometimes it's not always the case. And college can be really great for that. I love my friends. I got really lucky. I have a great group of friends. It took a long time to find that group of friends, but you'll find them eventually. I, I mean, if, 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 if high school doesn't work out, then I don't know, college, college is fine. That was Chris's advice when I asked him, like Chris, Stan Chris, when I asked him what's your advice on coming out, he said, wait for college. <laughs> you know, what's your <laughs> advice for coming out? I mean, to be safe. my advice, is kind of different. I would say that you don't overthink coming out or your labels. I mean, that's true. Yeah, he said about it. Too. I mean, the thing is, it's something that is exclusive to people that are LGBTQ plus, right? Mm -hmm. When I was 16, I did a whole post, and I cringe at it now. I think about it. I did a post. If I could go back, I wouldn't change anything because it got me to where I am now. But you don't owe anyone a post. You don't owe anyone a big declaration of who you are. I think living in a place of neutrality, of being like, this is who I am, and then just living your life and not letting people like kind of rain on your parade when it comes to your sexuality, I think that's a really great way of doing it. 
my opinion is a little bit in the middle because I feel like we are very privileged to live in a time that you can think that you can live your life without coming out and be safe. In New York, for That's example. That's in New York? Uh, yeah, in New York, we're in lucky. New York, in a bubble, right? We're in a bubble, so, absolutely. Uh, and a lot of time, LGBTQ community says, which is also like, I talked about it before, that it's eventually no one will have to come out. Yeah, but I, that's the goal, isn't it? That's the goal. That's the goal. But we are, I don't feel like we're in a position yet. You know, I feel like if you want to come out, you should definitely make a post or do something. Yeah. Because if you feel like this, you, you know, someone else would just, okay, I'm going to be acceptable. The reason why I'm saying this is because, like, I would not come out if I would not see people on YouTube coming out. You know yeah. what I mean? For me, it was like, okay, there's this guy and he lives like his best life and he's gay. He had this coming out story. I was like, damn, like I didn't watch YouTube, but then I started to like learning, learning more and more. And it's like, oh my gosh, there's so many gay people. You know what I mean? Like, there I are like, a lot of gay people. There are, and, and they also go, but never they spoke about their coming out experiences as I was relatable. You know, like I, I felt like, okay, I went through this. And for example, for me and for a lot of kids like you and me, these people or like VR with this video m can make an effect on someone's life. You know what I mean? Who is gonna, who, who will maybe not gonna come out, who is just gonna be himself, like you say. Or maybe he will come out, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm, I feel like we, just because I'm also from Ukraine, you know, <laughs> I just know that it's yeah. not the best place to be gay. So uh, I feel like, for example, in Ukraine, you can't really like come out that well, you know, or like just leave your life yeah. without asking, because people will beat you up sometimes, or, you know, police. That is true. So, uh, I feel like that I agree with you completely. There's just no right I feel answer. like it's, it's truth in the middle. You know what I mean? I feel like yeah. some people, if you really go and do this, you know, do this. You know, if you really want to post social media, do this, uh, you know, the whole social media or like write a book about it or something else. Yeah. But if you want to live your life, I feel like we are lucky enough nowadays that you don't have to come. You can just go to college and it's like, oh, I have a date with a guy tonight. I can. And That's they're like, exactly. okay, yeah, cool. Yeah. I think there's no right answer of how you come out because it's all up to you. Yeah. I came out with a post, I got outed, so I wanted to reclaim it. And that was really cathartic for me to be like, fuck you for outing me. Here's my post. Yeah. I'm gonna be myself in a Catholic school and I'm gonna fight like hell to make people know like who I am. And that's what I did. And I was outed and I just yeah. pretended to be straight <laughs> for a couple of five months. Oh, the duality of men, right? Uh, yeah. Um, so then there's that approach, but then there's also the approach of just living your life. There's no right answer. Right now, at the age of 19 going on 20, I'm just living my life with it because it's been kind of, I've had a couple of years to like, you know, just figure it all out and figure out my sexuality. So yeah. my best advice is to do what makes you comfortable. What's so if you want to come out, come out. If you want to just live your life, do that. But don't be pressured into either. And that's what I- Live your life. Just live your life. Yeah. Don't be, yeah, that's my, if we want like an overall yeah. point, don't be pressured into doing anything you don't want to do or does not make you comfortable. All right, thank you so much for coming. Oh, I God. am Jesus. definitely, okay guys, I'm gonna put you closer to yeah, us. Yeah, pull, pull it up, pull it up. So uh, I'm gonna definitely invite Spencer one more time. Yeah. So I feel like he, he has so much, okay, okay. Yeah, no, we're good. good. Yeah, so we're good, we're I feel good. like Spencer has so much insight for uh, a younger people, because 25 and 19 is different age already. You know, you are, you are like in diff you're like Gen Z, you know? I'm like Gen Z and you're, millennial. You're, it's like the last year. Millennial. Yeah. I feel like you're not quite a millennial. Maybe you're a millennial. I'm like, gen it's like the last year, you know? Yeah, what I you're mean? like right on the cutoff. But, but I always tell my friends and all my subscribers, like, I feel like I'm 65 inside. So okay, <laughs> I'm, okay. like, I'm like, boom. But anyways, thank you so much, Spencer, for coming. Thank you guys for having me. Please, I'm very happy to be here. Thank please, you. Please uh, say in comments that Spencer is awesome, because uh, I think he's awesome. Okay, I appreciate and, uh, it. Please let me know in comments if you have any comments, if you have any questions to Spencer, and we might do a Q&A later. You yeah, know? well, it's because all he, in time. He's, he's doing, you know, he's doing cool things. I thought it's gonna be cool to bring him here. Thank you so much. Don't forget to smash the like button, because if you Thank didn't you. smash the like button, it means you're cheating. You're and like comment cheating. and share and subscribe. Yeah, comment and share, but like button for sure, because it doesn't cost you anything. Thank you so much. Yeah. I'll leave his Instagram in my description, and I'll see you in the next video.